So today we will learn about sets and different types of sets. To begin with, let's first of all exactly see what is set. Set is basically synonymous with the words collection, aggregate or class. It means that it can be either said as a collection of something, aggregate of something or class of something. And it is comprised of certain elements, objects or members. Now following are the examples of sets. Like we say the collection of vowels in English alphabets. Similarly the collection of all the president of the Indian Union. Or the weights of all the students of a class. So these all are the examples of sets. So now in other words we can define the set as the collection of well defined entities, objects or elements. Or a set is a group of one or more elements with common characteristics. Or it's a set as a collection of distinct unordered objects. Sets are typically basically the collection of numbers. So a set may contain any type of data including other sets. Now let's see how we describe a set. A set is basically described by listing the elements and these elements are separated by commas and these elements are written within the brackets as well. For example if I talk about a set of vowels of English alphabet. Now vowels we know are A, E, I, O, U. Now in the form of set you will separate them with the help of commas and you will write down this within the brackets. So this is how we represent a set of vowels of English alphabets. Next is a set of even numbers. Again the same thing we will write down all the even numbers separate them with the help of comma and put it inside the brackets. Now we have to remember one thing the order in which the elements are written makes no difference over here. Also repetition also of the elements does not make any effect. For example if I write down 1, 2, 3, 2 this is same as set 1, 2, 3. So that means there is no effect if there is repetition or the order is also not effect. Now after this let's see what are finite and infinite set. A finite set means a set which has the finite number of elements in it like the elements which can be counted. And the process of counting terminates at a certain natural number, say n. For example, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. These are set of finite numbers. Also, 1, 2, 3, 4 till 100 is also a finite set. Now, let's see what is an infinite set. A set which is not finite, or in other words, a set in which the process of counting does not terminate in a set is called infinite set. For example set of natural numbers or set of even numbers or set of odd numbers. Now the next we have is equal sets. Two set A and B are said to be equal if every element of A is a member of B and every element of B is a member of A. So if set A and B are equal, we write down like this. Similarly, let's see what is an unequal set. When they are not equal or there exist at least one distinct element between these two sets, then we say that it is an unequal set. And we write down A is not equal to B when A and B are not equal. Now let's say that A is one of the set containing the numbers 1, 2, 5 and 6 while B is another set containing the numbers 5, 6, 2 and 1. Over here A is equals to B. The reason is that the element of A is an element of B and vice versa. So this is what an equal set is. Now after equal sets, let's talk about universal set. 
there happens to be a set that is U and it contains all the elements under consideration and such a set we call it as a universal set. For example, there is a set A containing the elements right from 1 to 5 and there is another set B which contains the elements and numbers from 4 to 9. Now we can say that they are both contained in the universal set which is a set of natural numbers only because all these numbers are natural numbers. In a plane geometry the set of all the points in the plane is a universal set only. Now let's look at some more examples. It's given that U is a universal set containing 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 and 12. Now we have to list all the elements of the following set. The first says that X is a factor of 72. So A is such a set. So X is a factor of 72 means 4, 6, 8, 9 and 12 because these all are the factors of number 72. Now the next part says that B is a set where X is a prime number. So we know that the prime numbers are the numbers which is divisible by 1 and itself. So over here the prime numbers are 5, 7 and 11. So set B can be written like this. Now set C says that X should be an odd number. So we will write down all the odd numbers together and we get this as the set C. Now after knowing about the various types of set, let's look at the Venn diagram to explain the set theory. Now the set theory can be explained using the Venn diagram which is basically the circles and the rectangles or the combination of these. So given below is an example of Venn diagram. Now over here in this given figure this U represents the universal set while A represents the subset of U because there is a circle which is inside a rectangle. Now A complement will be all those elements which are not a part of set A. Hence it is written as A dash that is the complement of A. Now let's look at what will be the Venn diagram if the two set is either disjoint set or the intersecting set. Let's first of all see if it is disjoint sets. Let's say in the universal set, set A and B are basically two dis disjoint sets. So U represents some real numbers, A represents some odd numbers and B represents some even number. This is the example for this type of sets. Now next is when the two sets are intersecting set. For this the example is where we consider U as the real number set, A as the even numbers, B as a number which is divisible by 5. So we know that 10 is an even number and it is divisible by 5. So there is some intersection between both the set A and B.